All right, well, today we are going to be finding, buying, and most likely fixing up a new car for my girlfriend. So she's needed a new vehicle for a while now. We've already been through this process once. She started with a Ford Ranger. After years and years, that truck had just kind of been worn down and it needed a good bit of work to be tip top shape. And she really wanted to get into something bigger. It was a small truck, single cab. So we found a 2000 Chevy Silverado and I was pretty adamant on her getting a Silverado because I, as the guy who I'm going to work on it, <laughs> I know those engines very well. I've swapped them into a bunch of cars. I have a Silverado with that engine in it. I know they're easy to work on, they're simple. They're not overly complicated. They're good stout trucks that last a long time. Now the problem is a lot of other people know that too, so they're a little bit pricier than some of the other options. But we did manage to find a good deal on one. You know, we found one with under 150,000 miles that was extended cab, four wheel drive with a 5.3 V8. So it hit all the boxes and it was under budget. However, it did have one caveat, it had some rust. And I debated it pretty hard on whether I should, you know, give her the go ahead, like this is a good truck to buy. And the rust wasn't visible, so, you know, there's that. Uh, but yeah, in hindsight, that was the wrong call. Now, the truck never had any real mechanical issues besides needing the alternator replaced. It was a good truck in that sense. She had it for about two years. I mean, she put over 40,000 miles on it. And it never broke down on her, it never left her stranded, but the rust just, it, it caused problems. It reared its ugly head. At one point, one of the leaf spring shackles broke and the leaf spring punched a hole in the bed because the leaf spring shackle is thin and had rust on it. And you know, you think about that problem and apply it to the entire truck. Everything has rust, everything's weakened, everything's harder to get off, everything's harder to take apart. So because of that, if anything major were to go wrong with the truck, I know it's gonna be incredibly difficult to work on. Not to mention, now she's in a different position. She doesn't really need a truck as much. She's driving 45 minutes each way to work. So it made more sense for her to get into something a little bit more economical. Now the difficulty is she would much prefer a truck. I would say a car would be the best choice for her for what she does and the type of driving she does. Uh, so we kind of had to meet somewhere in the middle because you don't really get much truck for your money. If you're willing to spend 10 grand on a vehicle, that doesn't get you much in terms of any sort of truck, but it takes you a long way as far as a car, you know, some sort of car, small SUV, something like that. So I tried to steer her towards the car. She tried to steer towards the truck and we kind of met in the middle. I spent quite a bit of time looking on Marketplace. It was actually harder to really find what I was looking for than I thought it being such a common vehicle. I thought there would be options aplenty, but there, there really weren't. It was kind of tough to find the right one, but I think we did. And we went ahead and took a gamble and went and looked at it. All right, so we are going to buy a new car for my girlfriend. Uh, this time I've been way more diligent in my search. We're looking for a different type of vehicle altogether. I finally sold her on this type of vehicle. She is picky on type of vehicle. She does not want a small car. She likes to have something big enough to where she feels safe, which I understand. But if it were my choice, we'd be looking at something different, but it's it, good compromise. It's, it's, it's what she is okay with, but it's also what I know is a solid, reliable, easy to work on car. Because guess who has to work on it if it breaks? This guy right here. So I'm always worried about what's easy to work on. That is always my number one priority when I look for a vehicle. So we've been doing some searching, relatively tough to find relatively tough to find, harder than I thought. Um, but we found one that hits all the criteria. So uh, one of the big things I look for is finding a private seller. I hate buying from a buy here, pay here place if I'm gonna be buying a car cash because the buy here, pay here is marking it up because they're offering you financing, which you can't get from a private seller. So you're paying more for something you don't need. At least that's how I feel about it. Plus the dealerships always sketch me out because you know that they detailed the crap out of the car and you don't know what's hiding under there. I do not like buying from used car dealers in that sense. So, found one that's a private seller. It's the mileage, what range we want, we're good with. Uh, it's the year range we want and at the price we're within our budget. So, happy about that. And on top of that, you know, color, interior color, like that stuff's my lowest priority usually. But this one happens to be pretty much the color she wants and it's cloth interior, which is not as common and funny enough, she always cloth interior better. So on all hits some marks. Now let's see if it's a piece of junk or not. Let's hope it's a good car and we bring it home. So we got the cash money in the envelope. We're ready to roll. So 
see you guys when we get there. Uh, we'll go into more detail about it and buying used cars as an experience because you I've learned a lot over the years, man, and it's uh, it's an interesting game for sure. So anyway, uh, we'll go look at this thing. Hopefully, hopefully it's solid. Nice neighborhood. It's a good sign. Good sign. All right, well, here it is. We ended up buying it. We bought the first one that we looked at, which is pretty common for me. I, I do that often, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best way to go about it. I just like to do my picking and choosing and overanalyzing before I go look at a car. I like to only go look at something if I'm ready to buy that particular one. Again, probably maybe not the best way to do it. I wouldn't necessarily advise it, but that's just the way I like to do it. Assuming everything checks out. You can never be afraid to walk away if something doesn't check out, but this one, this story checked out. I'm big on the story. Like I said, I like to buy from private sellers, not dealers, you know, not finding a car that's, you know, the whole engine bay has been armor all, and you don't know how it was taken care of. You don't know if it never saw an oil change. I feel like you can see a lot more of the story when you buy it from a private seller and the story of this one checked out. You know, we met the people at their home. If they know that they're selling a piece of junk, they're kind of unlikely to meet you at their house. They had owned it for a long time. That's another big thing. You know, if someone's never even put the car in their name or they've only owned it for a month, that's a sign that there could be something wrong that they know about that they don't want you to know about. Uh, so they had had it for years. It had it since 70,000 miles, which was a decent bit of time. The wife had just driven it home from work. It was still registered, so obviously these are all good signs for me. If the car's been taken off the road, it's not necessarily a bad sign. They could have gone ahead and replaced it, and then now they're selling it. But if it's still registered, then obviously it doesn't have any major mechanical problems because they wouldn't be driving it to work. So again, these are all not sure things. You can't fully guarantee based on these things, but it does help confirm the storyline. So fortunately, the story checked out, which was good because it was really hard to find one of these from a private seller. Most of the ones I found were uh, from dealers. So it's not perfect. You know, it's got some scratches, some dents and dings, but it's a 2012. It's had under 150,000 miles. It is a pretty base base model. You know, it doesn't really have many options. It has the cloth seats, which were actually a bonus. Uh, it's got, you know, the factory backup camera that they all have and some of the other things, but it's really got everything that she needs. You know, she's not big on the trinkets and the, the fancy luxury stuff. So really this thing is perfect for her. So past that, you know, there's no, not even a hint or a sign of rust. The car has never lived up north. Everything looked good underneath. There was no major leaks or anything like that. So it really all came down to the test drive. And we did find some issues on the test drive. And this is where it really pays to know common problems with the specific vehicle you're looking at so you know what the issue might be. So in this case, we had three real problems. Problem number one, the car had a shake under braking. Now that's most likely warped rotors, that's pretty common. That one I wasn't too concerned about. That's just replacing some parts in the suspension, worst case. Problem number two, the AC was pretty weak. So the AC wasn't blowing as cold as I would like. You could tell it definitely wasn't fully charged on Freon and that could go either way. That could be a rabbit hole. And problem number three was that the transmission had a shutter. As you would accelerate, it had a bit of a shutter at low speed light acceleration. Now, fortunately, the transmission shutter is actually a very common problem with these. I know someone who has one with the transmission shutter. And if you look it up, it's a pretty common problem with a pretty simple solution. So. We took the gamble on it. We were able to get the price down a little bit because of the issues, which was a bonus. And we ended up picking it up for what I felt was a really good deal based on what I had seen looking for these for a solid few weeks. So we got it home and the very first thing I tackled was the AC. You know, on the drive back, you could tell it was definitely low. It wasn't just that it needed time to cool off. So I wanted to see if it was low for sure, or if it was some other problem in the system, and if it was low, top it off. So it was, it wasn't super low, but it was low. Took about half a can, filled it up, and time was really gonna tell us if this was a simple problem or not. If it was low again in a week or so, then obviously we've got bigger problems. If not, we're good to go. It's probably just a very, very slow week. And fortunately it was, it's been great ever since, so. Just, you know, older car, some Freons leaked out slowly over years and years needed to be topped off. So that one checked off the box. 
Problem number two, transmission shutter. Now this is something I really wanted to get fixed because same as the AC, if it wasn't the simple solution didn't work, it was gonna be a little bit more expensive of a fix, which I budgeted into the price we got the car for and was prepared to have to change the transmission if that turned out to be what needed to be done. But fortunately it wasn't. So the process to fix the shutter is pretty simple. You basically just replace the fluid. So. To do that, you can't really drain all the fluid out at once because a lot of it's in the converter. So the common process is you drain, you get about three quarts out, top it off, drive it around just a few miles just to cycle it through, drain it again, top it off again, do that two or three times. So we did it twice and the shutter went away completely. So big potential problem number two, taken care of. And after that, problem number three, <laughs> kind of fell to the wayside. She's actually had this thing for about six months now and we're finally gonna tackle problem number three. Fortunately, it has been really good. She's put a good bit of miles on it. She's had it for six months. It's been good to her. But we took it on a trip recently to see family. You know, we took all the dogs three hours each way. And problem number three, the shaking under braking. I was like, man, I gotta take care of this. You know, when you're not driving the car every day, you kind of forget about it. But after driving it, 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 it became priority on my list. So that's what we're gonna do. I wanna fix that problem and then see how this thing is. With, with all three problems taken care of. So let's go take it for a drive first. I'll show you what the problem is and hopefully my potential solution fixes it. The problem is when you brake, it shakes a little bit. So it's really not doing it that bad right now. So you can feel the pedal pulsing and I'm holding it static in the same spot, which leads me to believe that the rotors are warped. Because basically what's happening is if the rotor is warped, it's going to grab harder in one spot and then as it rotates to the next, it's not going to grab as hard. So the car will kind of free up and then grab again. So the solution, replace the rotors, replace the pads and see where we're at. It could need some suspension parts, could be that, but the car has always felt very tight. So I don't think that that's the case, but you never know. All right, well, I wanted to take a quick look under here with it on the lift since I've never had it on the lift. And it looks pretty clean. As I saw when I looked at it just on the ground, we've got no rust. This thing's definitely never spent a day of its life anywhere up north. That is one of the benefits to finding a front-wheel drive one is it's less likely to have lived up north than an all-wheel drive one would be. But I did see a little problem. We have a bit of an oil leak here. I don't know if it's just from the filter. It definitely looks like it goes as high up as the filter seal, or if it's the pan, pan gasket. Uh, either way, it's not terminal, so we'll let that ride for now. <laughs> so that being said, let's get into the brakes. I wanna get this done and see if this fixes the problem.
All right, brakes are done. I still need to do an oil change here soon. I forgot about that, it was on my list, but if this solves our problem, then all three things that we started out with, all three issues will be sorted and this thing will be pretty dialed. Uh, again, it's been good for six months. Uh, we took it on a six hour round trip and I, it was really solid. It is a really nice daily. I know dailies aren't the most exciting thing, but we all need them, whether you're a car guy, you know, if you have a good, solid, reliable daily, that's less time you have to spend working on your transportation, more time you can spend working on your project car, and same goes for your girlfriend, your significant other, uh, whoever it may be, if they have a good, reliable car, less time you gotta work on that, more time you can work on your fun stuff. So that was one of the biggest reasons for doing this. I just wanted to make sure she had something reliable, something solid that she could count on. I knew she wasn't gonna have any issues when I went out of town. That was always my fear with the truck, that she would break down and I wouldn't be here to be able to help her. Luckily, seems to be a good little car. Let's go see if it's fixed. I don't want to speak too soon, <laughs> but I'm pretty confident that was it. The brakes were pretty toast. So the pads have been done at some point, but the rotors, not so much. All right, moment of truth here. Ah, finally, finally. I almost never drive this thing, but every time I do, I'm like, man, I got to fix this. And I've been kind of putting it off for about six months now, so. Glad we finally got it done. It feels great now, super smooth. Do a little bit longer of a drive, make sure, but I think we're good to go. Now, light braking is where it liked to do it a lot, and it hasn't done it at all, so I think we're good. All right, well, we've officially fixed all of the little problems, at least the ones that were there from day one. <laughs> it only took six months, but hey, at least we got the first two done pretty quick. This one wasn't so important, but it was really noticeable when I drove it. But like I said, I never drive it, so I kind of forgot about it, I'll be honest. So let's wash this thing, it's it's filthy. All right, well, got this thing cleaned up. You probably can't tell on video, but it is nine day difference. Good as new, this thing was filthy, long overdue for a wash. She works on a dirt road and parks under trees. So this thing gets really dirty really quick and it hasn't had a bath in a little while. So uh, it always feels good when a car that's been dirty for a bit, you clean it, looks like a whole new car again. All right, well, Chrissy has been driving the CRV for the last couple months and fortunately all is well. <laughs> you know, no new issues to report back. Uh, I'm really, really glad we got that toy for her. She has never really had a dialed vehicle, you know? Her first truck had terrible brakes and it shook like crazy under braking. Then she got her Silverado and it didn't shake under braking, but the brakes were just never that great. They didn't work all that well. Uh, this car had great brakes. They worked incredibly well. It stopped super fast, but it always had that little shake. So to have all that sorted, it feels good. And uh, you know, she's been driving it. She's been getting steady 27 to 28 miles per gallon in the city, driving through stoplights, which is pretty impressive. You know, that's calculating it at the pump um, and it matches up with what it says the estimated mile per gallon is. Uh, all is well. There's really nothing left to do on the front of dialing this thing in, working out those bugs that you find with a new car. So now we can do the fun part. We can do some upgrades. I've been waiting a long time for this, but it's finally time to make this thing look a little less boring. So firstly, we have these Koenig lockout wheels. Now these are pretty cool, man. I feel like they've got this nice kind of rally style to them, which is perfect for this project. And I decided to go with bronze. You know, I thought about getting something a little more subtle for her. She's not big into flashy, poppy wheel colors, but this bronze is just such a nice bronze and bronze on white is just such a killer combo. I, I couldn't resist. So these are 17 by eight plus 43, pretty tame, not super aggressive setup. And I know Koenig wheels very well. I've ran them on a ton of different cars. I've smashed them into walls, other cars, rumble strips, potholes, just about everything you can think of. And I've never managed to fully break one. So I trust them. I know they're gonna hold up on her car and get her where she's going safely, but while being, you know, a little bit stylish. So to go on them, the tires, these are sick. This is like the thing I'm most excited about is these new Nitto Nomad grapplers. So these are designed for specifically for the crossover SUV stuff, for overlanding those types of things. And this is really the perfect tire for this situation because she drives a lot on the road. She needs something that's gonna hold up on the road well and not be super noisy but she needs a tire that can get a hold of just about any terrain because working with horses, she finds herself going down dirt roads and sandy roads and all sorts of stuff all the time. And in Florida, 
it rains a lot and roads can flood out really quick because when it rains, it pours. So she needs a good tire that can get a hold of just about anything and get her where she's going without having to worry about her getting stuck. So these should be a huge improvement. I love the style and design of these tires. I think it's really cool that they came out with a tire specifically for this class of vehicle since there wasn't really much out there that was meant for this. I love Nitto stuff and it'll be good to have her on Nittos and have her on a tire that I don't have to worry about her having issues with blowouts or anything like that. So that being said, that's what's going on first. We need to get them mounted up and then get them tossed on the car. So I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering and get to work. I kind of screwed up and I ran out of my tire lube. So we gotta use a little dish soap. One down, three to go. tires are all mounted up. Now, since I know you're gonna ask, no, I did not balance these. Now, if I could have, I would have. My balancer is buried in the container. I don't have a place for it in here, but I normally don't balance any of my wheels and tires. Obviously, for my drift cars, it wouldn't make sense to, but even my daily drivers, my street cars, I never balance them and I never have issues because one thing I've learned over the years mounting and using literally thousands of tires is if you get a good quality tire and a good quality wheel, you generally won't have balance or shake issues. Now that being said, I'm not saying that I wouldn't benefit a little bit from balancing my wheels and tires, uh, but I just don't bother because I never have any issues with any sort of shakes or vibrations. That being said, if I could have, I would have on these just because they're for my girlfriend's vehicle. They're a larger wheel and tire, so any imbalance is gonna be amplified, but I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Now, if we do, if there are any, even a tiny little shake, tiny little vibration, I'll take them and get them balanced, or I'll dig my balancer out of the container, um, but I think we'll be fine. Like I said, good quality tires specifically, you generally won't have any issues. The better your base is, the less weight you need to correct issues, because you're gonna have less issues, less imperfections. So. That's my stance, I'm sticking to it. No, just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't balance your tires. I just don't bother because I, you know, I don't have any issues. So, yeah, let's get these mounted on the car. All right, so we got some aftermarket lug nuts. This is very important when you are swapping to aftermarket wheels. You need kind of a smaller, different conical seat and everything. So I actually had to steal these. I just got these for my 86 and I had to steal them back to put on this car. Bigger tires, lighter than the stock setup. Come back and torque these. 
is, but. Woo! <laughs> Check it out. The lighting is terrible to show you what these look like, but aftermarket stock. Yeah, I gotta flip it around so you can see them. It's so dark. The sun, the lighting, the shadows. All right, let me get the other side on and uh, we'll get a full picture of what this looks like. Yeah, that looks way better. Those tires are so perfect. Oh, the lighting is terrible. I'm gonna go drive it and then uh, we'll try to check it out in the shade. Look at that. Oh, it looks good. It's perfect. Not too big of a tire, not too small. Offset's still within the fender arches, so she won't spray the side of her car with mud. I would have gone a little more aggressive if it was mine, but I think that's perfect for her. Not an ounce of shake. Not even the slightest bit. If we get any rubbing at full lock here. Look at that, no rubbing. Wow, this thing's got a really good turning radius. I think it honestly drives better than before. But yeah, literally no shake whatsoever. All right, well, here it is all cleaned up again. And with the wheels, I am pretty dang happy with that. Perfect setup for her. The tires, the wheels, the offset. Subtle, but still a little bit of pizzazz. It's dialed, man. It looks like a rig. Now now, I'll, now I want to drive this thing. <laughs> so I never wanted to drive it before, but oh, it looks so good all cleaned up with the wheels. I'm stoked. Been wanting to do this for a while. And uh, what a difference. What a difference. There's still some little things to do with this thing. I need to do, the, you know, restore the headlights. It's due for an oil change. But uh, yeah, nice new Nomad Grappler tires. Koenig wheels cleaned up. Spicy unit. Stoked. Oh, so that being said, that is gonna be a wrap of Chrissy's CRV project. Let me know what you guys think of it. Was it a good choice, bad choice? Uh, so far, I like it. If you need a daily with a little bit of room, uh, it's a really good choice. Great gas mileage, pretty comfortable. Definitely feels like an economy, you know, economy car. The doors feel real light and dinky. There's not a lot of sound deadening, but you know, part of that is a sacrifice for efficiency and cost. So I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's the best choice for her and what she does. But let me know what you guys think. If you have one, uh, what would you have picked instead? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, that is gonna be it. I've been filming this video for the last few months, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I sure hope to see you next time. Goodbye.